All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're going to be doing the 2017 updated how to record and stream with Overwolf tutorial. And if you're not familiar with Overwolf, for those of you who may not have heard it before and are looking for a screen recorder to go out and record video games with, Overwolf is kind of like, uh, it's got the same overlay system as, say, Steam, the gaming platform, but rather than offering you different games to buy or use, this one is more about providing you different tools, apps, and programs that give you different functionality inside of the game that you're playing. Like, they can do things like give you your instant replays in League of Legends. They can give you stats on who you're about to face off against inside of Counter-Strike. All sorts of stuff you can get access to with this tool. But what we're mostly concerned with is game capture and also streaming to Twitch. Now, I don't know if this program will let you stream to other places like, say, YouTube, but if there's an app for it on here, you probably can. So the first thing we're going to cover here today is how you utilize game capture inside of your games. And the way that you do that is via the Overwolf HUD. This whole client comes with this funky looking HUD that pops up over top of your screen or whatever you're doing. And then you can click on that little icon that looks like a recording camcorder and it'll open up the button that allow you to record. But it's not quite just that simple. You might want to dig into some of the deeper settings for the game capture stuff just to make sure that everything runs really smoothly because some people run this program on older computers and recording a game doesn't seem like it's that complicated but it can actually really lag the pants off of your stream or your game or whatever you're trying to do with it so we're going to open up the settings menu here i'm going to move this overwolf window off to the side for later and we're going to go down to this capture section and talk about all of these settings to help you understand what you need to do in case you need to tweak anything for your computer. So the first thing that I leave ticked off or turned off is the open media player after a video or a screenshot is captured. So one of the nice things about Overwolf is it actually has like a preview window that pops up that you can enable that'll actually let you preview the video or the screenshot you just recorded so that you can see if you captured the moment or if you need to, say, go back to a different save point and restart your episode that you just recorded and then try it again from the top. So I don't really like this being enabled because I like to just go boom, boom, boom and record a bunch of stuff and I'll check it later. I'm pretty practiced at that stuff by this point. But if you're not sure, or if you're fine with taking a break with whatever game you're playing, some people play a lot of single player games or RPGs, then you might want to leave this checked open just because it's kind of, <coughs> mm, excuse me, just because it's kind of a little bit convenient. The other stuff down here is you can see what your current hotkeys are for what different functionality that this program offers you. And if you want to change any of those, you can just go down to the hotkey tab and find the aforementioned hotkey and then change that or disable it if you don't want to use it at all. Some people just want to do it manually, which you can do. And then of course, the location where your computer is storing all of the footage or the screenshots that you take from this program. So by default, these things go in your videos and your pictures folder, which are just underneath of your user and you can change those to be just about anywhere. And if I was personally going to use this beyond my tutorial here today, and I did at one point use Overwolf, the older version, for about a month, and it was okay, it did a pretty decent job, I would probably save those to my secondary hard drive, which has boatloads of space for just about anything. Uh, down here, we've got the recording mode, and Overwolf offers you two different options for recording. You can just record your monitor, which is just like recording your desktop, or you can record your active game. And for most people, the thing that's going to be better for performance and for quality is going to be recording the active game, because not every game can be recorded by just recording your monitor. In fact, this will just try to record your desktop, and when a lot of games are full screened, 
all that will do is record a black screen because your monitor gets disabled when something else is, or your desktop gets disabled, and nothing gets rendered to your desktop when you're in a full screen application. Uh, beyond that, Overwolf supports just about any resolution that you want to use. That includes above 1080p up to, you know, 2 and 4 and 8K. And the trick with that is that you just have to click on record the original resolution, which will attempt to record whatever your game is currently running at for resolution, as opposed to whatever your monitor is trying to run at. You can also, of course, do the standard three sizes, 1080p, 720p, or 480p, but you probably want to be somewhere around 1080 or 720, just to keep things nice, crisp, and HD for uploading to places like YouTube or even Facebook. Now, this program also lets you go up to 60 FPS. It doesn't go quite as high as 120, like, say, OBS will allow you to do. And my general spiel about frame rate is that this program has a frame counter in it, so you can see what your current frame rate is. And if your computer is not capable on your current settings of getting at or above 60 FPS when you're trying to game, don't try to record at 60 FPS because it's going to look stuttery and weird and kind of janky when you then try to upload it to some place like YouTube. If you are getting a solid 60 FPS, leave it at 60. If not, bump it down to 30. It'll be overall better quality once you put it onto YouTube. And then, of course, this is where we get into the stuff that's a little bit more complicated and confusing for people. So, Overwolf records in MP4 video format. That is H.264 video format. And Codec is basically using some component of your computer to record that MP4 video. Multiple different codecs can record multiple different versions of the same type of video. It's just a different piece of technology in your computer that does that job. Now, currently, I've got it set to use my GPU or my graphics card to record with. And basically what that does is it uses the chip on my graphics card, which is already rendering out this footage that is getting sent to my monitor, and then it captures it and saves it to a video, which means there's very little performance drop, there's very little resource drag on my system, and you get these really beautiful, elegant videos that you can then do with whatever you want on the internet. Now, some people would probably not have this option available. NVIDIA's NVENC and AMD's AMF codecs are only available with the most recent couple generations of graphics cards. I think starting with the GTX um, 650 for NVIDIA and the comparable version for AMD. So if you don't have these, you're probably gonna have to use the default X264 encoder which just uses your computer CPU to do the recording, which is a lot laggier. So if you have an older computer, this might not work. You might have to use something like OBS, which lets you optimize it for performance. But I'm going to leave mine to NVIDIA because that's just really good to use. So these presets are some basic presets that are attached to the codec itself by the people that developed it. And most people will probably want to leave it on automatic or default because that'll just pick whatever seems to be the best for your system. But if you're finding that your computer is having a lot of lag issues or whatever, you can set it to high performance or something like high performance, low latency to try and cut down on the likelihood that your computer will lag or your video will re be recorded really laggily. And if you've got a pretty beefy computer and you want to try and record something really crisp and beautiful, you probably want to try for something like high quality or, I don't know, like high quality, low latency. Low latency is more about the latency between when your computer renders a frame and when it gets recorded on like the chip itself. You really don't necessarily need to use that unless someone tells you a specific reason why you should. So I'm gonna leave mine on high quality, but you might wanna leave it on automatic or high performance. Blu-ray disc is basically like high quality, but it'll be specifically recording at the video bitrate or data streaming or processing rate of a Blu-ray disc, just for reference. And lossless is pure, unadulterated, uncompressed video. It's huge, and that'll fill up your hard drive really fast. So I don't recommend using that. You don't need to. 
And then down here we've got, do you want to record your mouse cursor? Yes. Uh, do I capture the overwolf windows? I, I don't want to. Um, why would you want to turn that off? Some games don't handle having your mouse being visible very well, and people will see it on your video when you're recording. So you wouldn't want that in like an FPS game or say an RPG, but you might want that in say a real-time strategy game where seeing where your mouse is lets people know what you're doing while you're playing your game. Uh, beyond that, it's just like where you have your indicator for whether or not the game is, or whether or not Overwolf is recording or your frames per second. This is the corner that it'll appear on your screen. And then if you want to capture your system sound, say yes if you do, no if you don't care. Select the device that you're using. I'm currently using my Logitech headset. And then whatever microphone that you're currently using, I'm using the Blue Yeti microphone. And that's basically it. Once you've done that, you can just grab this dock, swizzle it around wherever makes you happy, click on the video game capture button, and then this lovely little HUD will appear at the top of your screen. Uh, currently, it's set to take a screenshot, so I can take a screenshot of what is going on on my screen, especially if I click into the game itself. Now I can take a screenshot, it'll flash briefly. Ooh, look, you took a lovely screenshot, Larry. You're getting really good at this, they'll say out on the internet. And then, it co of course, it can also record video. You just grab this little slider over, pull it over, and now it's in video record mode. And then we can start recording a video, and it'll actually give us a nifty little countdown timer to tell us how long we've been recording in the event that you want to be very professional with your recording and do things like record 10 minute episodes, 20 minute episodes, or whatever. And then you can either hit the hotkey to turn off the recording or just hover over it again and then turn it off via this button. And then finally, you can click on watch and share your video to get a live preview of what you just recorded. And from here, it'll also give you options to upload it to places like YouTube, Facebook, uh, there's probably other options too. Or you can just edit this video on your computer because it's just in a folder to upload later whenever you feel like it. Uh, that bas that's basically it for how to do the video recordings. The other thing that this program allows you to do is you can horse around and stream straight to Twitch. And this program right here is actually the official live streaming program that's actually made by Twitch TV. So this isn't like a third party solution. This is literally made by Twitch. And if you go to their dashboard on how to record with different programs, they'll give you a guide on how to use this as well. So what this allows you to do is you can log in. That's what you do via this panel by clicking on the little Twitch face. And then you can insert the name of your stream like Buck Wild Crab People. And you can also hit the button to go live and it'll actually tell you how long you've been streaming. Beyond that, it gives you options to view your chat natively right on your screen while you're playing. So that's where the overlay technology comes in really handy. And you can turn on your webcam right here. Although, unfortunately, oh, it's appearing in this upper corner. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't really give you any options to do any green screening. So you're pretty much SOL if you want to do any of that. So I'm just going to turn this off because we don't need that right now. But you can also enable whatever this Toby thing is. I've never heard of that. So if you want to know how to enable and mess around with that, you'll have to go to another tutorial. But what we're looking to do right now is we're looking to go to the settings to talk about how all those work for streaming. So this is nice because it lets you natively select the closest server to you. I'm in uh, Colorado, so I'm going to pick U.S. Central. I know for a fact that Dallas is the one that has the lowest ping to my location. I can also sign out if I want to sign in as a different user. You can set up whether or not you display your viewership counter or if you add the Overwolf watermark to your stream. I don't know why you'd ever want someone else's watermark on your video, but that's where that is if you want to get rid of it. Whether or not you want your mouse cursor captured, if you want to stream your desktop um, on monitor, or if you want to switch to a BRB message when you tab out to your desktop. 
This is actually a kind of a nifty automatic feature. So basically what this is telling you is if you select this, it'll automatically stream whatsoever's going on on your desktop when you tab out, for example, or if it switches to an automatic be right back message. That I find is actually really handy. Most programs, you have to enable that by other means, so that's handy. Uh, video, pretty straightforward. What size video you want to stream at, what frame rate you want to stream at, and of course, what bit rate. Now, bit rate, the maximum it goes is actually the maximum that Twitch allows you to if you're not a partnered streamer, which is 3,500 kilobits per second. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, a good high quality video that you record is probably going to be around between 15 to 35 thousand kilobits per second. So this is actually on the lower side of quality, but that's all that the ingest servers for Twitch can handle from everybody at a time. So, you know, it, sometimes you have a slower internet connection, so you might want to tone down how much you're trying to upload at a time. You can also set it to be automatic so that your computer will try to determine what is best for you. And if you're trying to stream and you are a partnered streamer, which it makes me wonder why exactly you'd probably want to try using this solution at all. But if you're a partnered streamer on Twitch, you can go as high as 6,000 kilobits per second. But if you're not a partnered Twitch streamer, which you'd know if you were, you'd already be practically famous, then they'll get mad at you if you do that. So stick with 3,500 at max or lower. Uh, same thing with codec. Uh, the CPU one uses your CPU, the NVIDIA or the AMD one uses your GPU, and then whatever preset you want to use. With streaming, you probably want to prioritize high performance, because if your computer is lagging, your stream is going to be lagging, just as a pro tip. Devices, this is just whatever microphone you want to use, and if you want to use your system sound or not, and if one of them is too loud, you can adjust that right here. And then if you have a device that enables real sense from one of those Intel webcams. You can do that here once it gets enabled, but this hasn't done being developed yet, from what I understand. And then of course you can change your hotkeys to whatever. And then once you're done setting everything up, you can just click on this button right here to go live. Also, you can set your streaming settings. Never stream, stream what you see, always stream. Pretty, pretty standard, straightforward. So yeah, that's basically how you record and stream with Overwolf, my recommendations for settings, what each one of them means so that you can figure out what works best for you. And of course, I mean, this, there's a lot of information here. Like I understand that people new to video technology, or at least the, the backbone that runs video technology might have some questions about what all this means because it's a little bit confusing. If that's the case, feel free to drop a question in the comments below, and I'll try to help you as best as I can. Sometimes I can't, and I will probably refer you to the Overwolf support if I don't know the answer, or if your problem is a little bit more technical and more specific to your computer, it'll be faster if you just ask the experts that actually designed these tools. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Maybe check out my gaming channel where I do a lot of things like making videos with the very technology that I talk about. And I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.